Hi everyone, welcome to this session. Today I'm going to be talking about Apex triggers. But before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for the session. So first we'll uh, start off the session by understanding what triggers are in Salesforce. Then we will talk about how many types of triggers are there in Salesforce. Then we'll understand what is the trigger syntax. And we'll also talk about trigger events, what we have in Salesforce. Then we'll uh, next we'll discuss about some of the real time scenarios for writing a trigger so that you'll have a better understanding about it. And then we'll also discuss about what are context variables in triggers. Okay, and then at last we will uh, see a small demo of writing a trigger so that you will know how to get started with it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. So the first question is what is Apex triggers, right? This is the first question that will pop up in your mind the moment you hear about Apex trigger, right? So you would be knowing about DML operations that we have, for example, in Salesforce, when you actually go to a record, what are the, what are the kind of DML operations that you can do? Either you can insert a record or you can update a record or you can delete a record, right? So these are the DML operations. Now, let's say that you want to perform some kind of custom actions, right? Based on any particular condition or let's say criteria. So you want to perform that particular action before a DML operation gets executed or even after the DML operation get executed, right? So what will you do? In that case, you can go ahead and write a trigger. And in that trigger, you can specify all these things, right? You can specify the criteria and you can also specify when that trigger should be fired. Like, you know, for example, let's say if you are inserting an account record, right? And if you want to perform some kind of validation before the account record is inserted into the database, right? Let's say if you are entering the phone number and if you want to validate that the number of digits that your the user is entering into the phone number field should not be more than 10 and should not be less than 10, right? So such kind of validation, what you can do, you can write into the before insert, right? So what will happen the moment somebody like, you know, is trying to create an account and if they are not following the criteria, if the phone number is not following into that criteria that you have mentioned in your trigger code. So what it will do, it will fire the error, the whatever error you have given in your Apex trigger, it will show that message to the user that you are not, you are not entering a valid phone number, right? So similarly, if let's say after the account is inserted, you want to create an associated or respective contact record, right? For the account. So what you can do, you can basically use after trigger and you can mention your logic that whenever an account is created after that, a contact should get created, right? So these are the kind of events or the kind of code or script you can write in your Apex trigger in order to make it work. Okay. So let's just go ahead and uh, see what are the types of triggers that we have in Salesforce. So this is what we just talked about, right? We have two kinds of triggers. We have before triggers and we have after triggers. So let's say if there is anything which you want to do before a DML operation is executed, before the records are basically stored in the database or saved in the database, right? So those kind of trigger logic you would be writing in your before trigger, right? But let's say if you have some condition wherein you want to perform your uh, logic or you want your code snippet to run after a certain operation is performed, then you would be writing that logic into the after triggers, okay? So this is this is what I've written here, right? So these are used to perform, for example, in before triggers, these are used to perform a task before a record is inserted, updated, or deleted, right? And then similarly, in after triggers, the only difference is that you would be <clears throat> basically performing your action, custom action, after the changes are saved into the database, right? So let's just go ahead and see what we have next. So this is the trigger syntax that we have. So here you would be writing uh, this keyword trigger. And then after that, you have to mention your trigger name. This is a custom, I mean, this is dynamic. You can mention whatever name you want to mention here. And then you have to mention this keyword on, and then you have to mention the object name. <clears throat> okay. So for example, let's say I want to create a trigger on account object, right? So I would be writing something like this trigger and then trigger name. This is the trigger name that I have given as per my choice. I can give whatever I want to give here, right? Whatever makes sense to me. And then I have included this keyword on. And then after that, I have to mention the object name, which, and for in my case, the object name is account because I want to write a trigger on account. And here you have to mention that trigger events, right? Let's say whatever code you are going to write here, if you want that logic to be uh, performed or executed, before insert, before the account record is inserted into the database, then you would be mentioning that event. And let's say if you want to perform any logic that you are like, you know, writing here, you want to, you want that to be performed after the 
after the insert then you would have to mention here after insert right so and here one more thing here you can mention multiple trigger events so whatever trigger events you will mention that code will be basically executed as per the events that you have mentioned okay so let's say in my example uh, let's say um, let's say okay the same example that we took right let's say i am what i want to do is i want to validate phone number before a account record is inserted into the database right so what i will be doing i will only be including before insert and here what what will i do i will write a logic that the account that that is being inserted i will validate the phone num phone number right phone number size if it is less than 10 or greater th greater than 10 then throw a error message right so that my code or my trigger will exactly know that before insert before saving the record into the database execute this particular code code snippet right and then uh, similarly when it will execute it it will throw you throw the user an error that you are doing something wrong the phone number that you are entering is invalid so this is how you define a trigger and this is how you can basically include your logic and here you have to include your trigger events okay okay so here uh, is a list of all the trigger events that we have um so based on the type of triggers that we have right before and after triggers these are the events that we have before insert after insert before update after update before delete after delete and after undelete right so this example we already saw right before insert if you want to do some kind of field validation before the record is inserted you can write that particular logic into before insert trigger and if you want to let's say do a cross object updation right let's say if i am um or oh, let's say creation let's say i'm uh, i'm i'm inserting a contact record and once a contact record is inserted i want to create a respective account record like you know using the contact information so i can write that logic into my after insert right because it will need an id right when you will actually try to uh, create the other record other the cross object record and as it is related to your first record right first object on which you are writing the trigger it will need the id so that is why you would be using after insert right and similarly for before update and after update you can have like you know similar events let's say if you um, let's say if you want to <clears throat> for example let's say if you are if you are like you know somebody goes and tries to update a lead record and on the lead record they are trying to update the email id so let's say you already have a lead record where the email id which user is trying to update on this uh, particular current lead record already exist so you can write that in before update so that in before update it will validate that whatever the lead existing lead records are there out of those existing lead records is there any lead record where the email id is matching with the current lead record which is being updated so in that case you can use this event similarly based on your criteria based on your like you know condition you can use all these trigger events okay <clears throat> so here there are some like you know i have just mentioned some of the real time scenarios for writing a trigger so for example this one mandating email id and phone while creating a lead record right so this will come in your before insert right so before somebody is trying to insert a lead record you can uh, make email id and phone mandatory let's say if i am if the user goes and they are creating a lead record and they are not entering email id and phone then you can write a apex trigger into uh, like you know before insert of on lead object and you can notify the user you can show an error message that you have not filled in email id and phone number right so this is one of the scenarios and then for example the second one checking duplicate lead record before create an update the one that i just discussed right so in that case what you can do is that before somebody is creating a record or updating a record you can basically define your trigger logic on like you know before insert or before update and you can check if there is any existing lead record where that particular uh, email id or let's say any other field already exist email id or could be last name right if 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 they are trying to create a duplicate or if they are trying to update a existing lead record and trying to put something which is already there as part of some other lead record right so they will not be able to do that you can put that kind of validation in your apex trigger right then prevent an active account to be deleted let's say so this particular the third scenario you can write in before delete right let's say what you want to do is you want to prevent users to delete an account record which is active let's say on my account record i have a checkbox called active right so if that checkbox is checked if the account is active then the user should not be able to delete that particular account so what i can do is i can write a trigger logic and i can use the before delete event and i can mention i can check that if the account is active then prevent the user to delete the account i can show an error message that you cannot delete this account because this account is active right 
and then we have something called uh, the, the fourth scenario which is whenever an account is created then create an associated contact record so this will come in your after insert right because you would be creating an account and then you would be creating an associated contact right and when you will be creating the contact you would need the account id right so that is why you have to write it in after insert so that you will create the account you will use that id to create the contact so whenever your account is created the trigger will be fired and it will also create an associated contact record okay so moving on so we have something called context variables in triggers right so let's say uh, this basically uh, provides you the flexibility to write uh, write your code in a better way right let's say if you have a in your trigger logic uh, you have mentioned three events right let's say before insert before update after insert and after update and in that trigger you are just writing uh, you are writing two let's say two functions right let's say two functions you are writing and you want to be you want each of those functions to be executed on a particular event right but in your trigger you have mentioned let's say four events so in your trigger you can basically put a condition right which event are you writing that function for right so for example i'll okay let's just go to the trigger context variable so that you will understand it better okay so here let's just start with trigger dot is insert right so as i explained right if i go back to the slide let's say here right so here i have mentioned before insert and before update right and here if let's say i if i write two functions right and both the functions i don't want to be executed for both the events right i want to execute one function on before insert and the other function on before update so what i can do is before before that executing code snippet i can put a condition if trigger dot is insert right if the if 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 like you know if my code is like you know if my uh, trigger is working on like you know currently executing on insert context then only execute that particular code otherwise don't and then similarly for the other code snippet that i would be including here i can put this condition right uh, trigger dot is update if <clears throat> trigger is trigger is uh, basically working on the update context then only in like you know execute that particular code snippet otherwise don't so it makes it more uh, better right the way you would be writing your code and managing your code it makes it more readable right so that is why we have all these uh, context variables to make things easier so for example this one right trigger dot is insert this will return true if the trigger is basically getting executed in an insert operation right <clears throat> and likewise we have trigger dot is update which will uh, return true if the trigger was fired due to an update operation similarly we have is delete is before is after and is un in under in the und undelete right so <clears throat> these are some of the uh, context variables that you can use for the events and then we have something called trigger dot new trigger dot new map trigger dot old and trigger dot old map and trigger dot size so trigger dot new so let's say whenever you are writing a trigger you would want uh, how 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 will it give you the uh, like you know the current record that you are working on right so basically it will contain the all the new versions of the s object records that you are working on let's say if you are inserting an account record right then how will your trigger identify what is the current record what is the new version of the record that is being worked on right so that is this is how you will identify so in the same logic like right? if i go back here here right so here i talked about that you want to put a validation uh, like you know before inserting an account if the phone number is valid or not so how will you identify that list right how will you identify that version of the account record that is being worked on so you will use trigger dot new so if i i will start writing a loop here right so for account acc colon and then where is that list that list will come from trigger dot new okay so that is how it helps you to get the new version of the s object record on which whichever you are working on okay okay sorry and then <clears throat> similarly we have something called trigger dot new map if you want a map of id and the s object records then you can use new map rather than uh, using trigger dot new if you just simply wants the list of new object records then you can use trigger dot new otherwise you can use trigger dot new map and then we have trigger dot old if you want the older versions of the records let's say if you're like you know updating a record right and you want the older version of the record then you can use trigger dot old and similarly if you want a map of the id and the s object record then you, you can use Uh, trigger dot old map and then we have something called trigger dot size so the total number of records in a trigger invocation both old and new so it will give the count of all the like you know associated records which whether it is old or new 
and then we have something called trigger dot is executing this will uh, okay so whenever any logic is running okay whenever any code is getting executed in your org that could be due to a lot of other things right it could be a visual force page it could be a, a web service or it, or it could also be like you know uh, via execute anonymous call right api call so let's say if you want to check that whatever code you are running if you want to make sure that your code is running due to that trigger okay due to that trigger invocation so what you can do you can check trigger dot is executing and this particular context variable will always return you true if the current context of the apex code is a trigger otherwise it will return false okay so this is all about triggers i hope you have at least got the basic idea that how you can get started with a trigger now let's just go ahead and see that how you can create a trigger okay so <clears throat> i will just simply create a i'm going to create a normal trigger for you so that you will uh, understand one second so i'll open my developer console and so from file you can click on new and then you can click on apex trigger okay so here you can give any name you want to give so i'll give it as account trigger uh, demo and then here you have to choose your object on which you want to write the trigger so i want to write the trigger on account object so account and then submit so this here you can see like you know that it created a trigger for me this is the name that i gave and this is the object that i had selected okay and these are the two keywords that i i talked about right it will have this keyword trigger and then on okay and here it has given me a default event for before insert so let's just go ahead and put a system dot debug system dot debug and here i'll uh, type in something as hello okay and let me save this okay this is saved now uh, this will get executed when i'll insert an account so let me go ahead and insert an account okay account okay so one second new account here i'll give name okay and uh, test acc1 and i also have another field called i believe onboarding status but let me try and execute this first okay insert acc and let's just try and execute this yes this is the field i was talking about so i because i have made it required so that is why i would have to enter this field as well okay and i'll give it the value i this is one of the values of this particular field okay so let me just execute this uh one second let me just go and check what are the values of that particular field okay so onboarding status and okay completed is not completed come back here and execute okay so my trigger got executed when i inserted an account okay so let's just go ahead and check that if we have this in the debug log or not so debugs so here it is right it got executed whatever i have written here it got executed when i inserted an account okay so my trigger got executed okay so i hope that you have a, a basic understanding by now that how you can create and trigger create a trigger and how you can start uh, like you know writing your logic and how you will be mentioning trigger events okay and don't worry about if you um, if you did not understand everything completely in the upcoming sessions i will be talking about each and every event uh, separately individually by giving you a better example and something more with like you know a lot more logic wherein you will be uh, completely understand that how trigger works okay so till then stay tuned bye bye